We're going to start the pitches now. I'll tell you a little bit about the process. We're going to have six companies. We're going to do eight minute pitches and we're going to do a five minute diligence. If you do see something that you like, uh, it'd be great to tweet that out uh, or post something on Facebook. All right, so first up is Meta Arcade. We have David Reed, the CEO, will be presenting. David, welcome. Thank you, everyone. I'm David Reed, founder of Meta Arcade, where we've built a platform to enable anyone who can write a story to create and publish their own narrative game, playable on mobile devices and computers without any technical artistic skills required for free. And since there's a lot of new phases here, I thought I'd start with a bit of an overview of what we're doing. Games are a massive category, over $100 billion and growing rapidly. But, and lots of people dream of making their own games, but it's a very hard and technical process. We're a team of industry veterans who thought, what if we could make it easy? And we started with storytelling, a fundamentally human activity that everyone does. We can't all write code, we can't all draw art well, but we all write stories. Look at places like Wattpad and fanfiction.net, where millions of consumers are writing stories being consumed by tens of millions of consumers. The numbers are absolutely massive. So we started to envision a platform where all these non-technical story writers could create their own interactive experiences, transforming their stories into tight, compelling games playable on any device. The Meta Arcade platform features a WordPress-style interface where you type in your narrative, draw art and, art and audio from our archives to bring your story to life, track the branching of your narrative in the map view, and ultimately use digital dice and other mechanisms for random number generation to resolve combat, mechanics, and other progression elements. There's a rules engine under the hood that takes care of all this for you, so you don't need to be a game designer. You can publish your adventures to the Apple App Store, Google Play, and Steam, and every time somebody plays your game, you earn a big piece of all advertising and purchasing revenue generated. And this is an idea that works for any intellectual property, any movie, any TV or film property, any book, any comic book, animated television and such. All we literally need is a thumb drive of assets or a link to a Dropbox, and we can get you started immediately on creating adventure games. And as a result, the opportunity is really a low-cost, high-margin, massively scalable content platform to be able to do in games what Twitch did for streaming, WordPress did for blogging, YouTube did for video, allowing people who are not technical to release their creative juices, making content that they are passionate about in massive growing markets using a free, fun, easy, shareable, and lucrative platform. As a team, we've got decades of experience on all the major disciplines of games. We've shipped dozens of titles on every major platform. I personally, in my career, have driven over a billion dollars of games revenue and been part of raising $150 million in fundraising. Over the summer, we put a prototype together in 10 weeks and brought it to the biggest shows in the US. We got thousands of gamers to play and register. We scored dozens of press articles and, right here in Seattle, won our first Best of Show award at PAX West. From there, we went to PAX South in San Antonio, brought the platform for the first time, and it was a tremendous moment of validation for the company. Fans came up over the course of the three-day weekend, created adventures with us in the booth without having any look early at the tech. We have that here if you want to take a look at it. And we got a number of great headlines as well, but more importantly, created three new adventures that we were able to send out to our players who then played it in our community sneak peek program. After coming back from PAX, we went ahead and made a tech demo of a license that we do not have quite yet. Uh, you may recognize this one. And we have a Star Wars adventure here that literally was just something we made where we took the platform that we had already, reskinned the UX UI to be a sort of Star Wars looking thing, pulled art and audio off the internet to just prove that this could be done for anything. And so if you get a chance, you can take a look at that. And maybe some of you have already taken part in this as we started to create our own Seattle Angel Conference adventure that we began last night at the Mixer and have continued to operate on here. It is something that literally anybody who can write a story can sit down and start creating this content. Now, so where are we at the moment? A few weeks ago we announced that we are going to be launching our first games on iOS and Android this summer. The plan is for those to be free to play, for anybody to download with premium currencies in there for getting more time to play and some premium transactions. And then later in the fall, we'll be commercializing on PC, Mac, and Steam, including the release of the Adventure Creator in a closed beta fashion. In the meantime, we're working on building out the back end and hardening our code. And the back end is something we are doing in partnership with PlayFab, another Seattle area local company, where they're going to be bringing us user accounts, virtual currency, cross-platform entitlements, and very importantly, analytics. And so what you're seeing here is uh, probably impossible to read right now, but it is the, uh, the analytics of what we as a Meta Arcade team have been doing in the game thus far over the past few weeks. With all this live data, it really helps us tune things to the market. And as we went through the process of due diligence with the Seattle Angel Conference folks, 
Initially, we talked about the fact that we're part of a $19 billion global industry in role-playing games, which is about $4 billion in the United States. And rightfully, the team pushed back and said, get a little more precise. So we did. And this is not an area of the market that's easy to track because it's a genre that's sort of new in terms of interactive fiction content. Uh, all the companies are privately held, but we were able to cobble together through a number of sources what this market looks like in terms of the big winners. And it's over $144 million globally, not including advertising revenue and not including all purchasing revenue revenue because this data is the, call it the 90% view of iOS, Android, and Steam. It doesn't include Amazon and other mobile platforms. It doesn't include PC and Mac outside of Steam. And for those of you who've been part of the conference and have gone through some of these other pitches, you'll recognize this big player down at the bottom, Pocket Gems and Episode Interactive, because we've talked about them a few times here. Episode Interactive is a really interesting model that replicates in many, or we are replicating in many ways for a different market. Episode is aimed at young women. It is a game that is about playing through a choose-your-own-adventure style adventure. They've licensed intellectual property that appeals to that audience like Mean Girls and Pretty Little Liars and such. And their numbers are staggering. They are now at over 3 billion episodes played, 5.5 million creators on their platform. And maybe what's even more impressive is just how quickly this has happened. And this, again, is not something we really understood, just how on fire this sector was until the SAC team drove us into the due diligence process. Episode launched in January 2014, and from there, they've accumulated over 3 billion episodes played over the course of these past few years. And you can see in that three and a half period of three and a half year period of time how a new license has launched and propelled their numbers forward. They built a $60 million business in under three and a half years. So impressive, in fact, that the largest games company in the world, Tencent, put another $90 million into Pocket Gems on top of the $60 million that they already invested in a category for a company that only has two games, one of them being episode and another one being a little more male-oriented. Now, we, are, we have a lead investor, and I am not allowed to publicly disclose the name of that lead investor yet, but I assure you, they see the same potential that Tencent does in this market for taking that episode model and aiming at, at a core gamer audience. We've raised $1.2 million from that investor. So if you're on SAC, you have a difficult decision to make. There are six great companies here, and I thought I'd close with some thoughts on why, I hope, and think you'll choose Meta Arcade. First of all, as we've talked about, it's a large growing market, and it's something that is very hard to see exactly how fast it's growing because it is clearly in that inflection point right now. This is something that's just sort of emerging in the mainstream consciousness, and as you look out there, you'll see a lot of articles about interactive fiction and games. Product market fit, not just with consumers and the press, but also with the published authors that you guys talk to through the due diligence process to create this content. The barrier to competition with our provisional patent that prevents people from going through the process of publishing directly to these app stores, in addition to the 1.2 million in capital and IP and gravitas that our lead is bringing. A proven veteran team with decades of experience across every major platform and working at some of the world's best companies in our space and the potential for super normal returns. And, and I'll park on this last slide, which I've shared with you at the end of each of these pitches thus far. Look, if this is a company that's acquired for 50 or $100 million in a few years, everybody's happy. But I believe, we as a team believe, our investors believe, our authors believe that this is the potential to do something really big and transformative and mirror what these content platforms have done before us. Thank you. Hello, everyone. That was a great pitch. Thank you. <laughs> I've heard that. I mean, I've heard different variations of it. That, that was good, really good. I would like to recognize, you know, myself, you know, there's Brian, Mihao, Eva, Ethan, who's not here, you know, who participated in due diligence. Um, and these are some of the areas we explored during due diligence. Um, one of the primary things was market size, like David talked about. You know, initially, I think the market size uh, picture was you know, it was rather large. <laughs> and we, uh, Not very precise. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, and then I think he helped us understand the market size. This previous slide, they talked about episode, Pixelberry, Telltale, you know, and then a few smaller players is the market right now. But then, as you guys saw, it's a, it's a vastly growing market. So that's something that we found out during due diligence. Um, operating plan. The reason I have it here is because of the disciplined approach that uh, uh, MetaArget team had with regards to their operating plan of how they wanted to start with, you know, a small game, you know, use that for validation and then kind of slowly grow, use a stepping stone approach. So I thought that was really good. Uh, the third one I want to talk about is customer traction. So, you know, particularly the game creation platform, right? There's 
interactive games that are out there, people play it, but then the game platform itself is rather unique. Um, so what we did to find out how good it is, or rather how people are excited about it, is actually talk to uh, some of the authors who would use this kind of platform to build games, and they're really excited. I mean, the couple of people we spoke with, they're excited that it actually comes with the marketplace. You know, so you just use that for your creation, and everything else is kind of taken care of. Uh, and second reason we've heard, you know, even if you know you are a you are a tech guy, you can code in Unity. Um, you know, they, you're doing something else, and then you want to do something creative with this platform. So this gives you a venue to do that. So those are the three things that we found out mm -hmm. during due, due, due diligence. Um, and these are some questions that I have for David. So first, I guess you kind of touched up on some of these, but I want to talk about you know, who do you see as your potential customers? I think you talked about the mm -hmm. growth in the area, but do you want to talk about potential customers? Absolutely. So you know, we've deliberately started with a license that will appeal to the tabletop gamer audience, right? Which is, you know, again, it's a subset of a subset of a subset, but, but to your point is what you said, we're doing it to validate the core metrics of the business and to make sure that the creators have tools that they need before we go too big too quickly. And so that audience is going to be very, you know, very focused on tabletop gaming and, you know, that's a few million people in the U.S. and it's not a bad market, but it's not the massive 100 million active users every month on mobile gaming in the U.S. just playing RPGs. But once you get that foothold, you then grow license after license after license and in the end, your target audience is very dependent on what license you get first and fundamentally anybody who loves fiction should ultimately be a customer if we're able to bring them a license that makes sense. So it is a little less about demographics and a lot more about psychographics when you come to that entertainment based Got consumer. It. Okay, let's move on. Um, business strategy um, with regards to getting good quality and quantity games? Absolutely, and so this is, again, with the authors that you talked with, right? It's very much a process where this summer we're doing sort of a closed testing thing, friends and family, where we're bringing in some of these published authors to make things, go into closed beta in the fall and let a few more people in, and start with people who we know will not be bad actors, who will make good content, and we'll bring their fans with them. And then when they bring their fans and tell their fans, hey, I made this thing, their fans will start looking at it, some of those fans will start making things. All right, okay, let's move on. Uh, yeah, this is... One of the key competitive advantage that's hard for others to beat. Yeah. And I think in our case, it's, it's the provisional patent because we're getting this thing about directly publishing to the app stores first, and it's our institutional investor who is putting capital, IP, and gravitas behind the business in a way that it will be tough for others to match. Okay, all right. That was, that was good. Yeah, that's quick. All right, thank you guys. We're on time. Thank all you. Right. Thank you. Good job, David. Okay. Good job. So we have some great sponsors that are providing some support for the entrepreneurs. We want to get more entrepreneurs to be successful enough to be angel investors so that we amplify the cycle.